I'm coming, I'm coming. Okay, busy day at the office. Hello folks, Andy from The Car Boutique here again, and this is hopefully a quick video, um, a tutorial stroke discussion on the subject of PIR, or Panel Impact Ratio. Now my rationale behind doing this video is I'm still getting a few inquiries as to how to work it out. Um, there are lots of uh, YouTube videos discussing this already. Some are excellent in explaining it, some um, overcomplicate the process. So rather than you going and fishing through all the old videos and, and advancing to the bit where I talk about it, this is a dedicated video to look at PAR, PIR, panel impact ratio, the easiest way to calculate it, considerations, I'm going to have a brief sort of uh, discussion around the subject of considerations when you're buying or looking at a new snow foam cannon. Okay, so hopefully you'll find it informative. We're going to have a look at the wavy flags, then we're going to crack on. Okay, so PIR, Panel Impact Ratio, what is it? Now, not like the name suggests, Panel Impact Ratio. It is the ratio of the snow foam solution to water that's actually hitting the panel. So if people talk about 4% PIR, they are saying that 4% of the actual chemical or the, the mix that's hitting the panel of the car is 4% of the product itself. All right, so a 10% PIR would be the actual chemical or the solution hitting the panel would be 10% concentration of the actual product itself. Now, why is this important? Well, it's a more scientific way of, of calculating stuff. Now, you've got to remember a lot of these manufacturers put these products through a lot of testing and they work out the optimum strength or the, uh, the optimum strength um, to be using on, on your car. And some split it down into light soiling, medium um, soiling and heavy soiling and all, all that kind of stuff. Now the only way to accurately um, uh, look at what's actually hitting the panel is to go through this process. Now a lot of manufacturers just do a rough and ready. They, they put sort of 10 to 1, okay? So you're, you know, I know, filling up an inch and then filling it up with water. Now that is very, very rough and ready because it is not taking into consideration what snow foam cannon you're using and also what pressure washer you're using. And you're going to see by this test, there is a huge difference in terms of how two snow foam cannons mix okay what's in the bottle and mix how it mixes it with the water coming into the snow foam cannon all right so when they say two to one uh, ten to one or fill one inch of, of product and top up with water that is so rough and ready because it does not factor in your pressure washer your water um, rate the mechanics of your snow foam cannon etc etc all right so the beauty of PIR is if you do this calculation once and use the same pressure washer, the same settings on your snow foam cannon and the same snow foam cannon obviously itself, all right, with one quick calculation, you can come back time after time and know exactly how much product to put in your bottle to get the PIR you're after. Now, a lot of people um, sort of heard about PIR when this product came out, um, Built Hamber Auto Foam. Um, to my knowledge, they were one of the first companies to steer away from the one inch of product or 10 to one, that rough and ready way of doing it. And they adopted a, a, a more scientific approach by specifying one or 2% PIR for light soiling or up to 4% for heavy soiling. And that's where most people sort of started hearing about this PIR. And indeed now, which I think is a good thing, a lot more brands or a lot more manufacturers are looking um, or giving instructions as to their recommended PIRs because it's the only way of actually knowing the ratio or the mix of product to water that's actually arriving on your paintwork and that is important it's important as you get more enthusiastic okay and you want to be you want to be more scientific and know exactly you know what you're what you're using um, on your car and like I said the other methods of doing it they work and you will naturally test and get um, sort of used to it yourself but I like the fact that when I'm at snow, um, snow, foam, snow foaming a car and I am um, looking at a lightly soiled car or a heavy soiled car that I know how to calculate exactly how much product to put in my snow foam cannon to get the optimum effect and that optimum effect has been researched by the manufacturer of the product itself all right so um, I'm going to strip this down really really simple there's a couple of ways of doing it um, and then we're going to look at some other considerations
Right, so the first thing I want to look at is PIR. Now, you can um, apply your snow foam either using a snow foam cannon or an actual foam sprayer. Um, the ones I use are the ones um, by Alien Magic. I think they're really, really, really good. Um, now, um, a lot of people sort of do ask, um, is there a difference between working out? Well, there is, um, and quite a simple one. When you're looking at something like a sprayer, you haven't got any additional water coming in that's mixing with the contents of what's in the bottle. So what you need to do is literally work out the ratio um, in the actual um, bottle itself. So if you're using, um, uh, for example, just as an example, built hamber at 4% through a foamer like this, all you need to work out is 4%. Okay, what is 4%? How much do I need to put in? So if you're looking at a litre, um, that is going to be 1,000 millilitres and you want 4%, um, you just multiply 1,000 by 0 0.04 and that gives you 40 millilitres. You then get your product, you put 40 millilitres in the actual bottle, top up to the litre with water, that is your sprayer mixed to 4% PIR because that 4% is it's not mixing with anything else, it's just going to come straight out, you know, hitting your car, okay, is going to be 4%. So in terms of sprayers, it's really, really simple. Once you've done that calculation, I mean, it's nice and easy if you um, run out and you wanted to put 500 millilitres in just half that. So um, 500 millilitres um, uh, times 0 0.04 is going to be 20 millilitres. So it's nice and easy. So that's it regarding a sprayer. Using it through a snow foam cannon um, is slightly more complicated, but you only have to do what I'm going to show you once. Um, now, I'm going to be doing a comparison ultimately with two snow foam cannons. The one I'm going to be doing initial testing is the Stiana Gloss snow foam cannon, and I'm going to do a comparison with the Auto Gleam one a bit later. Now, the reason why we need to do a calculation is because um, the product, okay, when it actually goes onto the car, isn't just the product that's coming in the bottle. It is getting mixed with large amounts of water coming in from your pressure washer. And that's this bit here, the mechanics of the snow foam cannon is where all the magic happens. All right, so when you're just looking at mixing a bottle 10 to one, it hasn't factored in the flow rate of water coming in. It hasn't um, sort of accounted for the mechanics, how this snow foam mix mixes the water with a pickup of the mixed solution in here, ultimately what you get out. So there's a quick test that you need to do. And if you're gonna be using the same snow foam cannon and the same pressure washer, you only have to ever have to do this calculation once and it's um, all done. So I'm gonna quickly show you my method of doing it. Um, there are a couple, but I'll show you my method of working it out. Okay, the test itself, it's quite simple, all right? And like I said, you're only gonna to need to do this once. Now, a top tip when you're doing this, um, your snow foam cannon hopefully is gonna be a constant variable and so is your pressure washer. You need to make sure that the setting is a constant. Now, rather having a sort of a mid-range um, foam mix setting that could be nudged and then you've basically lost your calculations um, or you've lost your ability to reliably work out PIR, always put this to the maximum and just leave it on there. So you know every time you come back and use this snow foam cannon, um, if you're using the same um, Canon um, pressure washer and that's still on maximum, you know that the previous calculation is going to be valid for future use. So essentially what we are going to be doing, we need to factor in the snow foam mechanic, the snow foam cannon mechanics and the actual water coming in. And all we're going to do is I'm going to discharge the contents of this into the bucket. All right, so I'm going to keep an eye on the actual level and as soon as that all goes, I'm going to stop. All right, then I'm going to measure how much water is in this bucket. Now, there's two ways of doing that. You can either um, pour the contents into some kind of measuring device and work out how many litres are in it, or you can use just some bathroom scales. All right, so zero the bucket out. So make sure when you start, they're reading zero. And if it comes to, I don't know, eight kilograms, eight kilograms is eight litres of water. And I'll tell you what to do then after. So I'm going to put this um, on a fast mo, and we're going to discharge the contents of this into the bucket and I'm going to stop when the, the final bit of water goes out this bottle here. we've discharged the entire contents of this bottle into the bucket. Now, one thing you um, need to be careful of, if, if, if you're discharging it there and the end of the actual straws there, it's not gonna pick up the final bit. So you might have to sort of adjust your bucket. The important thing is you need to sort of get this totally empty before you stop. Now, 
We've emptied it obviously into this bucket. Um, like I say, you can just go and measure it um, in a measuring jar, okay? But what we've done is we've nod this out and we're using the weight, all right? So um, I'll bring you in now. You can see that the actual weight of the water with the bucket weight nulled out is 11.5 kilograms. That means there is 11.5 liters of water in the actual bucket, which is good. And that's the only sort of physical bit you really need to do with your equipment and you'll go and write that down. Now the next bit is nice and simple. All you are doing is a bit of maths. All right, so you can use your phone. Um, now, if I'm looking, um, I'm just gonna f call up my, uh, my, not my calendar, my calculator. If I'm looking at sort of using built timber at 4%, what I would do is I would put the 11.5, okay, that's the amount of kilograms stroke liters in the actual bucket, multiply that by a thousand, and all that's doing is putting it into the milliliters, because when we're measuring this stuff, we work in milliliters. So that's 11,500 milliliters, 11,500 milliliters. If I want to work out 4% PIR, I will just multiply that, okay, by 0.04, and that will give me 460. So using all this equipment, I know that if I want to get 4% of this, or calculate 4% of this, I need to put into my actual bottle 460 milliliters of product and then top it up to the, the, the litre with water. If I wanted, um, for example, um, 2%, I do exactly the same calculation, so 11.5 times 1,000, but this time I multiply it by 0, uh, 0 0.02, and that'll give me 230. All right, so it's nice and simple. You only need that, that basic figure, that 11.5, 11, 11,500 uh, milliliters, and multiply it by whatever PIR, 0.01 for 1%, 0.02 for 2%, and so on. Now, the good thing about this is if, for example, you come to using it, um, I don't know, uh, you only want to fill up half of it, all right, you just half the figures. You've half the contents, you half all the figures. So whereby at 2%, we were putting 230 liters, uh, milliliters in here, you just go and put 115 milliliters of product and top up to 500 milliliters of water. So it's nice and nice and simple. So that is the easiest way of calculating PAR. Write them down. Um, you can either just write down the 11 and a half, or you can go through and do in a book, 1%, 2%, 3%, 4%, 5%, write it all down so you know if you come back to using this snow foam can and that pressure washer, you can just um, go straight away. I need a 2% to put 230 milliliters if I'm using a liter of, of, of liquid in my snow foam bottle. It's as simple as that. Right, we're now going to look at a different snow foam cannon just to emphasize the point that different snow foam cannons operate differently in terms of the way they regulate or, or process the water coming in from your pressure washer, the pickup rate, ultimately the output in terms of how it, mix, it mixes the actual um, chemical and the actual volume of water that comes out. And no two snow foam cannons are the same. All right, so when we looked at the Stiana gloss and we did a test with a liter in, um, we worked out the 11.5 five liters were in the bucket. We worked out, multiply that by 0.04, um, giving us our 4% PIR, PIR, um, PIR was 460 milliliters of product. So 460 milliliters of, of a snow foam solution topped up to a liter gave us 4%. I've done this on a different bit of video. Um, you, you can now see me putting um, this, this snow foam can and the Auto Gleam one through the test. So we um, did exactly the same test, put it all into the bucket, and then we looked at the weight. Now this time, to get rid of one litre, um, it weighed in at 9.2 kilograms. So that's 9.2 litres. So if we do the calculation again, calculator, so that's 9.2 litres times 1,000 equals 9,200. If we then multiply that by 0.04 using, okay, the Auto Gleam Snow Foam Cannon, we would need to put 368 milliliters, probably, you probably ran that up to 370, so let's say 370. So to get the same PIR, 4% PIR out of the Auto Gleam um, Snow Foam Cannon, we would need to put 370 milliliters and top up with a liter. All right, so that's 370 for the um, Auto Gleam one as opposed to 460 for the Stiana gloss. Now, I know what a lot of you are now thinking. You're thinking, well, if I've got a choice out of the two, why don't I go for the Auto Gleam one because I'm putting less solution in? But it is not as simple as that. I'll explain why now.
Right, so this is where the conversation may broaden a bit, but I'll try and keep it relevant. Now, we've done the test on the two, and it would suggest on face value that um, if you had a choice out of the two, ignoring all the other variables, price and all that kind of stuff, this the Auto Gleam one would sound more efficient because you are putting less of your snow foam solution in the actual bottle to achieve 4% PIR. Now it's not as, um, you know, that is, that is a statement of fact. We've tested that, all right? However, there are other variables to look at. Now, just to sort of throw one in, um, detailing is all about compromise. Um, if you find one product is, you know, outperforms a lot in terms of one, one aspect or one performance variable, it usually suffers another. Um, variables, I don't know, ceramic coatings, traditionally were susceptible to water spots. Okay, so that's a compromise. Um, high alkaline uh, snow foams are, you know, great for cleaning or have more bite, okay, but arguably less um, LSP safe. So, so detailing is all about compromise. And indeed, this is exactly the same. Now, yes, all right, to get 4% PR, you put less in this one. But ultimately, when you think about it, both of these have got the same stuff coming out. It's a 4% chemical sort of mixture. It's the same, or should be, the same chemical coming out. What will differ is the amount coming out, and I will prove that. Now, in terms of the amount coming out, it's going to have a direct relevance as to how long it takes to discharge this. We did a test on the Stiana Gloss. Um, I've got the figures here. Um, and we basically timed it for it to discharge the entire um, one litre. And the Stiana Gloss one um, took 1 minute 41 seconds to discharge the full litre. We then did exactly the, te the same test. We timed the amount of time it took for the one litre to um, be um, sort of expelled from the Auto Gleam one, um, and that took 125. So there is a 16 second difference, and there's your compromises. So, you, you know, it depends what you want, really. Do you want one uh, where, when you're making up your litre, use as minimum amount of product? But ultimately, that would be the Auto Gleam one, but then the Auto Gleam one gives you less time to apply it to your vehicle. Or would you prefer the Stiana Gold? one where you're putting slightly more solution in okay but you're getting more work time an extra 16 seconds in the case of our test so it's all about compromise there's loads of other things to look at and um, when it comes to snow foam cannons there's, there's of course the price um, you know this one doesn't have landscape portrait this one does so there's more functionality and um, their ability to make good foam um, reliability, um, the bottle, is it a wide base so it reduces that topple rate, um, fan pattern, um, lots of, you know, how easy it is to strip down and clean the gauze, replace the gauze and all that kind of stuff. So I don't want people thinking that, you know, it's just down to you're putting less in that one, it must be better. Not in any way, shape or form. And indeed, if I had a choice out of the two, I like the fact this one gives me slightly longer to um, apply it to the car. Um, I like the fact that this one has got the landscape portrait function. It's got a, 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 a good spray pattern. Um, and I've been using this, the Onagos ones for quite some time. Really, really like it. There is nothing wrong with the Auto Gleam one. And indeed, you've seen me use it on a few videos. However, I do miss that landscape um, uh, portrait function um, for the spray pattern. Um, but that's my personal preference. Now, if you want to go and look at some other videos we've done, we did look at a test at six snow foam cannons. I'll put the link in. It's an old video one, a bit amateur, done with the phones and all that kind of stuff, but it gives um, uh, an insight as to some of the other tests or other variables you may wish to look at if you're looking at a snow foam cannon. And we did a similar test to this on our six products that we reviewed for Built Hamber. So if you want to go and have a look at that one, feel free. If anyone's got any comments, either comment on YouTube or Facebook, please subscribe if you like what we do. We've got lots planned for 2023, lots of trips, visits, brand reviews, product reviews, uh, podcasts, and all that kind of stuff with a variety of people in the industry, some that you will know, some that you don't. Um, but like I say, we're not, we're not after sort of fame or anything, all right? We, we welcome people that who not many people know about. Um, let's get them in, in, in the discussion. Um, we all um, have a part to play in the detailing world, so the wider um, sort of uh, audience we can then um, expose our videos to and indeed get input from I think that's a good thing so hope you found this interesting comment any suggestions recommendations etc and I hope it has helped you um, realize that calculating PIR is simple